All right, so here's one of the more complex fi friction problems we're going to deal with. I posted the question, so I've just kind of written a summary of the problem right here. So we have a hockey puck with a mass of 0.17 kilograms that's initially traveling at 19 meters per second when it runs into a rough patch of ice. This length of rough patch of ice is 5.1 meters long. So that has to do with our displacement. And we have a coefficient of friction of 0 0.47 for this rough patch. So the first thing we wanna do is draw a free body diagram. So here's my dot, which is my puck. Okay, now let's just say it's moving forward. It's going in this direction. So friction will act on it in this direction. We don't know how much friction there is. But I do know that there is a force of gravity, which is mass times acceleration due to gravity. It's down. Now, if I left it like this, it'd look like it's falling down and going this direction. Don't forget about the normal force. And these are equal. So it's balanced vertically, but it's not balanced horizontally. And don't forget, the motion is this direction but the force is that direction, which means we are slowing down, okay? There's gonna be a negative acceleration to the right. So there's our free body diagram. Here are my knowns. Um, if we want, we can put them, write them here, but I'm just gonna try and save space, all right? So there's the FBD, okay? Um, on our FBD, we could also calculate the force of gravity. So I know my mass is 0 0.17 kilograms and g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that this is down. So go ahead and grab your calculator and put that in, 0.17 times 9.8, and I get 1.666, oh, fun number. Okay, and that's down. So since we know the force of gravity is 1.666 newtons down, that means we know that the normal force is 1.666 newtons up. All right, so now we know as much as we know from here. If you want, you can put in a little equation here because this might help you realize why I put in the force of gravity and the normal force. The friction depends on the normal force. So if I want to find the normal force, I need to know the force of gravity. And so that's how all of these three forces are related. And you'll notice I didn't put a direction on this. Um, and that is because the force of friction, and I know that I called it just FF. In this case, it's kinetic friction because it's moving, right? The puck is moving, so we call that kinetic friction. So when I use this equation, all right, essentially, this is just the magnitude because you can see from the free body diagram, the normal force is up and the friction is to the left. And you can think of it like if you pressed harder down on, a, on an object, it's going to increase the force of friction. So these aren't independent in terms of how much they are. They're independent in terms of their direction, but they are definitely related to each other. So in B, it asks us to calculate the kinetic friction. Well, the kinetic friction is mu Fn, and Fn is equal to mg. So we could have just put all these things in here, and mu is 0 0.147. So I'll put these in. And oops, I mixed up the order there. Hopefully you guys can follow that. Okay, so there's g, there's m. There's the coefficient of friction. And I still have my 1.66 left in from this. So I'm just going to multiply my answer by 0.47. So 0 0.78302. And this is still, so this is still newtons, okay? But this is the force of friction. So if they ask me for this number, then I should round this to the correct number of significant digits. And I'm going to put in the direction using my free body diagram. It's not coming anywhere from my values. So 0 0.78 newtons backwards or to the left. 
All right, so my free body time, there's my force of friction. Now they're asking for the acceleration. So this was A, this was B, I'm gonna go down here and do C. So to find the acceleration, I need to go back to my big five equations. And what I'll do is I'll write down what I know. Well, if you look at this free body diagram, vertically, F net is zero. So really the only force that's causing the acceleration if this is this horizontal force, okay? So I know what the acceleration, I, I can find the acceleration because I'm going to use Newton's second law. I said I needed the big five equations, but that's actually for part D. So F net equals MA, okay? Since I'm solving for acceleration, I'm just gonna put it this way. And then you might say, well, what's F net? Well, F net is all the forces. Well, all the forces causing the acceleration. If I add F net, F normal and force of gravity, they're zero. So the only thing really causing it is the force of friction, okay? So if I want to solve for the acceleration, divide both sides by m. Okay, I forgot my vector there. And the force of friction, I'm going to put the unrounded value, which actually is still in my calculator, newtons backwards. And my mass is 0 0.17 kilograms. Okay, so this is why I say don't clear your calculator. My calculator still has that unrounded value. I'm going to divide by 0 0.17 and I get 4.606. Now this is newtons per kilogram, and a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and there's my kilograms on the denominator, so I'm left with meters per second squared, and this is to the left. So there's two ways of doing writing this answer, okay? The acceleration is, I'm gonna put in the negative, and put 4.6 to get my two significant digits. And I'm putting a negative because I'm changing it to be forward because that's the direction of my motion. Uh, it's not super necessary to do that. It would be totally correct if you put the acceleration as 4.6 meters per second squared backwards or to the left. But since we're moving to the right, I just think it makes sense to say negative forward, which means we know we are slowing down. That's what the negative means. So let's go on to D. Okay. D asked me what V2 is. Okay, so this is where we go back to all of our motion equations. I'll just write them up here, what we know for that. So they're asking me what is V2 at the end of this 5.1 displacement. So my displacement is 5.1 meters to the right. I know my V1 is 19 meters per second to the right. And I know my acceleration is negative 4.6 meters per, well, 606 if you wanna say, meters per second squared to the right. And this is also helpful to have these all in the same direction because I know I don't have to mess around with directions and negative and positive signs when I go to put them in to this formula. Which formula should I use? Um, so I have V1, I have displacement, I have acceleration, I want to find V2 and notice I don't have time. So the one that I want is V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2A delta D. And V2 is what I'm solving for, and there it is. I just need to square root all of this junk. So I'm going to square root it right away. V1 squared is 19 meters per second. I'm not going to stick in my direction, but I can see that they're all to the right. So why don't I make the right positive, and I can just drop the direction. So 19 meters per second squared plus 2. But here you need the negative because of the direction, 9.060 meters per second squared, okay? Two times A and times delta D, 5.1 meters. And we could take a look at our units. They all should be meter squared per second squared. So when I square this 19, I get meters squared per second squared as well. Here, meters times meters is meters squared, and that second's already squared. So we know in terms of the units, 
these are all the same, so I can go ahead and just do the math. Okay. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 19 squared, and I'm going to throw in the negative right here, minus, because it just makes it easier to put in my calculator. I like it that way. 2 times 4.06, sorry, 4.6. 06 times 5.1. Uh, your calculator probably does bed mass, but when I was growing up, it didn't, so I'm going to put all that in brackets. I'm going to hit equals. That's what's underneath the square root. So now I'm going to square root the answer, and I get 17.6. Meters per second because I've square rooted meter squared per second squared. So my final answer of my second velocity after it passes the rough patch is approximately 18 meters per second to the right or forward. Now, does my answer make sense? Well, let's take a look. The initial velocity was 19. Okay, I found out the acceleration was a negative value, which means my velocity after the rough patch should be less, and it is. It's not a whole bunch less, but it's one meter per second less. So pause here, go over that, um, and then ask me any questions.